If you've ever wanted to convert your cassette tapes to your PC to digital MP3s or other files, you'll know that it's very difficult to do something like that if you've gotten rid of all of your cassette equipment. I have many, many more cassette tapes than just what you're seeing right now, but they all need to be transferred digitally into the computer. Now, if you look online for a simple cassette tape converter, many pop up by various different companies. Many people complain of extremely cheap build quality as well as issues with playing the tape itself. Like this reviewer here said that it ate all of his old tapes like crazy right out of the box, brand new. Also, many of these very inexpensive tape converters have an issue with stability and they will play your tapes back at a very on and off speed and it won't sound uniform. The speed will go all over the place and there will be lots of wow and flutter. So you may be asking yourself, if I can't use one of those cassette tape converters that come with built-in software to make everything easy as pie, what can I do to convert my old cassette tapes to the digital realm? Now many folks believe that you can simply use a Walkman or a portable cassette player to transfer your tapes into your computer. Now granted you can in fact do that, but the results won't be nearly as high quality as if you use a dedicated cassette deck. Now this is just a Panasonic 608 stereo cassette deck. Now the line output of this cassette deck uses two RCA cables. And most likely your PC will not have RCA cable audio inputs. They'll probably only have one that looks either like this or like that. Now since this cassette deck outputs its audio to RCA cables, I'd actually need to get an adapter that looks something like this. Two RCA female jacks to one eighth inch or three and a half millimeter male plug. Now I actually have my audio from that cassette deck going straight into my mixer so I have these cable adapters here that convert the two RCA cables to quarter inch mono jacks, two of them for stereo audio on this mixer. These two jacks right here carry the left and right audio from that cassette deck. Now that we've got everything hooked into our computer we need to go ahead and set up our audio editing program to record the audio from our cassette deck. There's plenty of programs you can use, but the free one that I recommend that I use is Audacity. The newest version being 2.0.5. Now once you go ahead and install Audacity, you get a program that looks something like this. You want to make sure you go in over here and select whichever input your audio from your cassette deck is plugged into. In my case, I actually have it plugged into my mixer, and from my mixer's audio output it goes into my computer's line input and so I just select line volume. And here we have the cassette I'm going to transfer into the computer. It's Alan Jackson's high mileage. It's from 1998 on Arista Records. Also, if you have your cassette deck connected straight into your computer, you're not going to actually hear the music that's being played on the cassette deck. If you want to be able to hear what the cassette deck is playing as you're recording, just go up into Audacity's preferences and make sure you go into recording and click software playthrough that will allow you to listen to whatever you're recording. Also, before recording any cassette tape, you might want to make sure to clean those cassette heads in your cassette deck. So here we are, here's the cassette tape. Let me try taking this out with just one hand. And we're going to start with side one. Put on our cassette deck here. It's rewound completely, reset our counter, and begin playing. And you want to make sure you have the settings correct on your cassette deck. If it's a commercially recorded cassette tape, like this, chances are it's a type 1 normal bias cassette tape. Set your cassette deck accordingly. In my case, I just set it to normal. And most of these commercially recorded tapes were recorded with Dolby B noise reduction technology. Make sure you select the Dolby B noise reduction to the in, or sometimes the on position. And now we're ready to play. Now you want to make sure your audio is not over modulating. You can see if I turn up the volume of our microphone right here, the audio will begin getting a little too loud. You can see how it starts clipping off the tops and the bottoms of the audio. And that's over modulating the audio. You can hear what it sounds like if you do that. Bring this down until we get a good audio level that's not over modulating. And that's pretty close. We have some headroom for the louder portions, but we're not clipping. Now that we adjusted the volume, we're going to rewind the tape one more time and start from the top. Play on the cassette deck and we will be ready to go.
So here we are about 40 minutes later and we've gotten the entire cassette tape recorded. I've turned the uh, the cassette deck off because uh, no sense in keeping it on. There's the tape itself. And now you're wondering, well, how do I split up all of this, this one big mass of different songs to separate songs that I can catalog and keep track of on my computer and put it possibly on an MP3 player, an iPod, what have you. First things first, we're going to zoom into the track by clicking this uh, little plus uh, magnifying glass here. Click your mouse up here where you can click somewhere in the timeline and then click the play button. But to avoid that extra click, I just click somewhere up here and it'll start playing. What we want to do is go in here, zoom in, and select the beginning of this music track. We can click play to verify there's no audio at the very, very beginning. We don't want to cut that off. So we have about a second of silence, which is good. Nothing's worse than cutting off the very beginning or the very intro or the outro of a song. And even though the actual song appears to be faded out by now, it actually continues on for quite a bit. It's just so quiet that it doesn't show up on this timeline view. So I'm actually going to enlarge this by dragging this entire thing down. And you can see as we drag it down that there's actually some song that's still extended beyond. So to verify that, we can click play. You don't want to cut off that outro, so... So it's fully silent about there. You click File up here, Export, Export Selection. So you just export this one song. So we're all done with that. We click Enter on our keyboard. This is where the cassette case or the cassette itself comes in handy. It lists the entire song list right up here. In our case, it's right on the money as the first song. We've saved it. We can go into our music folder and there's the file. We can start playing it. And what do you know? There's our cassette to digital transfer. And it sounds a lot better than those low quality knockoff cassette converters that are readily available all over the internet.